Teddy Bluger didn't have a bad 2021-22 NHL season, but he also didn't really progress. And if you ask me, he kind of looked a little lonely out there at times. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. Teddy's stat line doesn't tell the story really at all. 65 games, 9 goals, 19 assists. He was what he was. And it really just never amounted to more than that. If you're of the mind that Teddy's season changed for the worse after the broken jaw, I wouldn't argue that. Obviously, it has a significant impact on his games played count. He missed 17 of them. But there was something that was just off throughout the year, maybe with the exception of very early on when he and Brock McGinn and Zach Aston Reese kind of recreated the impact of the line from the previous year that had Brandon Tanev on it. But Teddy, he needs support and he needs to support. What I mean by that is this. Teddy's not going to create a lot on his own. And I'm not just talking about offensively, believe it or not. I don't see Teddy as being a superior defensive performer. I really don't. And I say that with respect to all the skill that he has in that regard and the effort that he puts forth. I just don't think he's that guy where you go, whoa, future Selkie candidate Teddy Bluger. Rather, I see someone who at both ends of the ice works very well, plays very well with others. If you want to call that complimentary or whatever else, go nuts. If you want to suggest that he's only as good as the players around him, hey, go further nuts. He kind of opened himself up to that this past season. I want to remind everybody that Bluger was protected in the Seattle expansion draft And Jared McCann wasn't. And I want to further remind everybody that the reasons for that were almost entirely founded on things to which he contributed. Meaning, Mike Sullivan really liked the effect of the Bluger line. And I'm putting that in quotes because it could be referring to anybody that was on the line with Teddy. And how he was able to utilize the Bluger line in matchups and really wear down, for example, the other team's top line and do so by keeping the puck deep in the far zone, which is the greatest form of defense that hockey's ever known. But what we never had to see, really, until this past season, was how Bluger would operate without All of those various familiar faces around him. And uh, yeah, it wasn't great. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They, in turn, need your help. Find out how one dollar can be turned into five full meals. For those in need, visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. Teddy's not a kid anymore. He's certainly not a prospect. He's a full-blown NHL player. He would be most NHL teams' third-line center, absolutely any NHL team's fourth-line center. And to continue the positive portion of this, he also joins Brian Rust on my list, and it might only be too deep, the most self-made players I've ever covered. And the fact that they're on the same team right now makes that sound unlikely, but I believe it. Teddy went from a guy who had a little bit of trouble with his skating stride to really lengthening that stride. He went from a guy who had trouble scoring to just constantly teaching himself different ways to score, challenging himself in an almost Sid-like fashion. He went from a guy who was kind of okay defensively to someone that you would trust 
in critical situations, in playoff games. He also happens to be a really cool dude. So, like, Teddy just checks all of the boxes, all right? Certainly in the intangible sense. But what has to happen, I believe, this coming season is that Sullivan needs to find consistent line mates for Teddy. And I know that sounds a little awkward because those are usually the kind of conversations that you have about Sid or Gino or, you know, star players. But Teddy, he needs that rhythm on the rink. He needs to know what the other guy needs. In other words, give you a small example here. A four check involving Teddy and Aston Reese. Which one of the two do you want chasing the puck? Okay. Which one of the two do you want blowing up the body whenever the puck goes where it is that you're trying to get it to go? Okay. See where I'm heading here? Teddy and Aston Reese had something. Teddy and Tan have had something. Teddy and McGinn occasionally flashed something. So what I'm hoping happens out of the coming training camp, is that while you do want to see the Penguins give younger players a chance, you do want to see someone like, let's just throw him out there, Valtteri Pustin, and like my favorite prospect for a couple of years now. If you want to see him operate, let's see how he fits with Teddy. Let's see if there's a way to create or to recreate some form of the Bluger line and make that a priority every bit as much as who's going to make the roster on the fringes. Do you follow what I'm saying there? It might not be all that clear because I might not be wording it all that well. Let me try it another way. Let's say there's a player who's just doing real well, okay? Not spectacular or whatever, but doing real well. And he's legitimately one of your fourth line fringe candidate guys. But there's another guy who might not be as impressive, but seems to work better with Teddy. I'm taking that guy and I'm not doing it obviously on individual merit. I'm doing it based on what my hockey team needs and my hockey team. If I'm working with this roster needs Teddy, because let me let you in on another little not-so-secret, okay? Teddy might have to be the third-line center. If we see more of Jeff Carter looking like Carter did down the stretch this past season, if we see more of Kasperi Kapanen being unable to score... Teddy might have to be the third line guy. When we come back, J1Q. And today's J1Q comes from Matt, who says... Hey, DK, I really love the podcast. The only place where you can get true insight into the teams and issues rather than simple conjecture. I appreciate that, Matt. Matt goes on. Here's my question. Yes, we're waiting for Ron Hextall to make a move, meaning move one or two defensemen for an impact forward. But is Hextall waiting for the NHL and other teams with more cap space to move first to see what's left? Maybe the deals and the deal partners just aren't out there right now, and we just have to be patient. I really think the answer to that question, Matt, is so much more boring than you'll want to hear. They're just not around. They're on vacation. (laughs) Okay? This is that time of year where there's absolutely nothing going on in hockey. If you open up a Canadian website right now that's just dedicated 24-7 to hockey. And I know all of that's redundant. So let's say you go to like theglobeandmail.com slash NHL. See what's there. It's next to nothing. Nothing's going on anywhere in the league. The reason for that isn't because of any kind of poker or anything that's being uh, channeled willfully by the GMs or by the agents. They're just not around. That is why doing a program called Daily Shot of Penguins in August 
merits hazard pay from whoever it is that's running this bleeping company. No, but seriously, I think you're going to see as the Penguins get closer to rookie camp, which is September 15, and then training camp, which follows a week later, there will be moves. They will not be the kind of moves that will blur you, but there will be moves. Bear in mind one advantage that a team holds by being patient and waiting for camp to make these last couple of transactions that are needed. And that advantage is this. You have an infinitely better gauge of their health, not just whether or not they get hurt in camp. You're always going to have injuries and slowdowns in camp. I'm talking about just how they show up. Is there some awful surprise? And you know what I'm talking about because one of the first things that happens at reporting day at camp, well, actually, no, the first thing that happens for the team are physicals, and they're intensive physicals, and then the players either have to go out and skate or they can't skate, and you find out an awful lot more about your roster, and there's almost invariably something that occurs where you go, oh, no, really? That guy? Well, if you're... Hextall, why would you want to make a move now, especially as it relates to sending out a defenseman or even two, when you don't know what kind of conditioning your defensemen are in? Dumoulin is an example. Now, Dumoulin's been skating in Cranberry, as Taylor Haas of DK Pittsburgh Sports has reported. Dumoulin's looking good. Uh, Everybody's always looking good this time of year. But let's see how it goes when there's a full physical. Let's see how it goes when everybody's forced to go out there and do wind sprints right off the bat. I think that might have something to do with this. But I think it's way more about the other thing. I really do, Matt. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. Let's find a way to do another one tomorrow. Tomorrow.